Faux, Rook, Piercings. Got to go through what you should know before getting it done and a little bit about the healing experience. Coming up next on Consultations by Piercer, episode number nine. So you probably want to stick around. For those who are new to the channel, uh, first off, welcome to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel. I hope you're finding the videos informative and useful, but you may not know who I am. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. Piercing we're talking about today is the faux rook piercing. It is a piercing done on the upper ear just above the antihelix, which is that ridge that's right there in the center of your ear. I'm um, done directly above it at kind of a slight angle to make it appear like you have a rook piercing. Uh, this is done with usually either a barbell or a flat labre stud with a gym setting on the front. Average healing time on this can range anywhere from 8 weeks to 12 or longer. Everybody heals at different rates. This piercing can be a little bit of a long heal, sometimes up to 6 months. During that time, I'm going to suggest you clean it twice daily using a sterile saline solution. Personally, I like Nelman's Piercing Aftercare. You can also find uh, the wound wash version or other forms of sterile saline. The biggest thing you want to look for is that it is in a pressurized can. Uh, it says sterile on it, and when you turn it over, the only ingredients that are in there are uh, sodium chloride in purified water. Consistency should be about nine or 0.9 percent saline or or salt, sodium chloride. Now, cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands so you handle it. No oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on, near, or around the piercing. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Uh, especially smaller animals like to sleep over your face and smell your breath and play with shiny objects. Avoid contact with unclean objects. Uh, culprits with this would be things like telephones, headphones, uh, anything that comes in contact with the area needs to be disinfected or contact needs to be avoided. Also, don't share items with other people. People. Lastly, avoid contact with wet hair. Make sure that you wear your hair up until it is completely dry. Next, let's talk about trauma, pressure, abuse. Uh, do not sleep on this piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on your other side or your back or find a way to elevate the area or isolate the area. One of the most common ways of doing that is using a U-shaped travel pillow then putting a clean sock on it every night and sleeping your ear in the center of it. There are other products on the market like uh, kind of pillows that have like a, an area that is indented or donut shaped. Basically work on it. Try to figure out what's going to work best for you. Avoid tight-fitting objects or anything that puts pressure on the ear or causes it to bend or fold. Things like over-the-ear headphones, helmets, uh, and anything that may add that pressure, uh, headbands that wrap around your ear, uh, hats, etc. Make sure that you're not adding any additional pressure or trauma on that piercing while it's healing. Uh, do not spin, rotate, or move the jewelry. There is absolutely no reason to do that. It's actually going to prolong your healing period and cause other issues. Uh, if you wear masks or you're required to wear masks uh, either because the pandemic never seems to be going away or you work in a field where it's required, uh, if you, you want to be very cautious when you're taking them on and off. If the back has any contact with the jewelry, the, the string does, you may want to consider getting one of the ear savers or wearing a mask that doesn't wrap over your ears. Now let's talk about jewelry. Uh, commonly with this piercing, I like labre studs. They seem to take up less room. You can also use uh, barbells or barbell style piece of jewelry. Threadless or threaded. Uh, I particularly like thre threadless mainly because there's a lot more options out there and the ends don't seem to come off as easy or readily. 
uh, gives you a much broader range of different types of designs to work with. Now, when it's pierced, we do pierce with a piece of jewelry that's way too long for what you really need. And the reason for this is to allow for swelling. It will need to be downsized, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, usually in about four to six weeks. So you should understand there's going to be a little bit of additional cost involved with this piercing in the jewelry. If the jewelry is threaded, you are going to want to check the end on a regular basis. They can come unscrewed on their own, just rubbing its clothing, bedding, etc., and they fall off at the worst possible time and land in the most disgusting thing near you. Now let's talk a little bit about pain. Uh, this one is usually a very quick piercing, slight pinch. Uh, maybe usually you'll experience a little bit of warmth in the area. Uh, right afterwards, throbbing, aching for a few minutes, and then it's going to be tender to the touch probably up to a few weeks to a month. If you bump it, you're darn well going to know it. Downsizing. Because we have to pierce with that larger piece of jewelry, you do want to downsize to a shorter piece. The reason why we want you to downsize is a couple of different reasons. First off, it's going to lower the profile and make it less likely to get caught on things. The other thing we want to, is that... Um, Having that longer post there can cause the piercing to shift or move or migrate during the healing process. Your body will just kind of is more likely to push it because it's weighted differently. Uh, putting that shorter post in is going to eliminate a lot of those problems. I usually suggest downsizing within roughly four to six weeks after the piercing has been done. Anatomy. You have to have the correct anatomy for this. Uh, usually this piercing is very much based on what your anatomy is. There should be a clear route. Uh, most people have a little bit of a fold there that this goes in. Uh, the angle should be done at that angle to match that so it looks like it's sitting on that top ridge at kind of a downward angle so that the pieces lay, both ends lay flat. Lastly, let's talk about some things that you should consider before getting it done. First off, if you're planning on going on a vacation or trip and you're not going to be able to uh, kind of uh, control the environments that you're going to be in, you probably want to postpone this. Um, if it's summertime and you swim a lot or you go on a vacation and you plan on swimming, then you want to postpone it until after you get back or you're done swimming. Now, if you're involved in any type of organization, either a performance organization or sports organization, that is going to require you to remove the jewelry, I would suggest waiting until after you're done doing that type of activities. Constantly removing the jewelry for even short periods of time, like you know an hour or so, and then trying to put the jewelry back in will cause issues. There really isn't anything on the market that's going to completely hide this piercing, even though glass retainers are a little bit harder to see you still are going to have issues with this if you, uh, you know, they're either going to make you take it out or you're going to constantly be changing that jewelry and it will prolong your healing period and possibly lead to other problems. Sleeping and isolating. I know I talked already about this, but I always like to bring it up again. Plan ahead. Um, unless you sleep flat on your back or you're definitely doing your right when you sleep on your left, you need to kind of have a game plan about this. Uh, a lot of people will be like, this is the year I want to get done because this is the year I want done. And they don't really think about the implications of sleeping and et cetera. So plan those things out in advance. Well, if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified when we post new things. Also, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Maybe one of these.